Hi friends, welcome to the Wild Side. I'm Steve Hall. Sometimes life begins with an outdoor adventure, especially if you believe stories of babies born under the protection of a mighty white oak tree in McMinnville, Tennessee. It's called the birthing tree, and folklore tells us stories of Native Americans walking the Trail of Tears, stopping there to rest beneath its branches, and settlers staying there for long periods of time under the canopy for shelter. What we know for sure is the massive hardwood is one of the oldest and biggest trees anywhere in the state, and has become a tourist attraction. The birthing tree is really an iconic symbol of Warren County and how we represent ourselves to the community, the state of Tennessee, and the world. This is known as the birthing tree for a variety of reasons, but the fact and the fiction part of it are a little bit intertwined and mixed for a great story. One of the citizens of the community was a soil conservation agent, and he traveled to a northern city for a convention of those folks. And a woman approached him and said, what can you tell me about the baby tree? How is it doing? My mother was Cherokee on the Trail of Tears and the group stopped on the Chickamauga route, which is now Highway 70. And they camped under a big oak tree just east of McMinnville. And my great-great-grandmother was born there. Research makes you very skeptical about anything that you don't have documentation. It's got to be written down somewhere in contemporary time. There's got to be some history of it or it falls into the realm of lore. A lot of people had shelter here and this is a symbol of that time. This was on the old Kentucky road, the old Kentucky trail. And before that it was a Buffalo trail and a Native American trail. And so there's been stories told that at one time, when the first white settlers came through here, they were still buffalo, and they would graze under these trees and eat the acorns. So that's a, an amazing little story. So there are stories that Native Americans actually were born under this tree, but we for sure know that pioneers were born under this tree on traveling the roads. And so the city of McMinnville and Warren County basically look at this tree as really a part of who we are. It's part of our heritage. It's part of our uh, really our cultural history and the stories that are connected with it really make it unique. Every storm that we have, every straight line wind, uh, I, the first thing I do is come out here to see if the tree is still standing. What we have to check is the uh, tension of these tree, these cables right here because yeah. it's supporting the weight of these big large branches. I'm trying to make sure all that's still functional. It's been here for up to 250 years or more even and so I'm, what I think about is you know what were the conditions like when the tree started and so I'm thinking back okay that's going to put us around 1750 and you would have had you know, a lot of open areas in here so you that's why you have a big open grown white oak versus a tall straight white oak you'd see in a forested setting this would have been growing in a in a big prairie or a big field uh, that had some sort of farming going on around or cattle history and it just kept growing and kept spreading. And because it was along a road, it stayed here and became, it was a really awesome shade tree. It could be 400 years old based on the usual rate of growth of, of a white oak tree. We always got to watch for, the, for a lawnmower whacking these because that, that'll be, become a point where you can introduce you know, pathogens into the tree. We have a storm and some major damage happened to this tree. City government was in big trouble at that time and said, we don't have the money. The arborists wanted to put in uh, lightning arresters and cables. So that when a, a lightning strike did hit, because it's very likely for trees to be hit by lightning, it, it'll take the strike down to the dirt and not pop the bark apart. The town didn't have the money to do it. We were going to find the money, and that's what we did. We found the money. When I came to Mount I came down this road, I was just six years old so it was a big tree it affected me and so i wanted to uh, see it preserved and we were going to preserve it at any cost i'm drilling into the tree to take an increment core to pull a 
sample of the tree out to kind of see its rate of growth. Number one, age, number two, and number three to see if it's sound and healthy. And these holes are relatively small and so the tree should be able to seal this hole off versus a big large wound it have trouble sealing it off. And so this is your one, two, three, four, five, and there's a defect at year five. Something hit the branch while it was growing. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And that was about when Wally was born. In 1933. Oh, we got three more years then. Uh, 11, 12, 13. All right, here's 1933. And then 14, 15, 16. Here's 36. Here's when you were born. 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, I think about 100, 101, 102. 102. Wow. And so we know for a fact that, you know, the tree was at least to here 100 years ago, and this branch may have leaned down uh, at that point, and, but you had a, a fairly large tree 100 years ago in 1920 you know, that was supporting this branch. This limb itself is the size of a usual tree. You can see a crack kind of going up that middle that's probably from the weight of this branch. We can't replace this even in three lifetimes. And so we have to protect trees like this. 22.5 feet is our circumference. All right, 85 feet. So now here we are, right among the limbs of the birthing tree. And just think, of all the stories this tree could tell. We are kindred spirits. I love this tree. I love to come out when I've had a bad day or a hard day or a lot of challenges and just kind of ignore the noise that's out there and just behold nature and, and what this tree represents. So, uh, yeah, I, I love this tree. It's, it's been a part of my life since I was a small child and it will continue to be a part of my life, I guess, till the day I'm gone. The birthing tree was entered in the Tennessee Landmark and Historic Tree Registry back in the year 2000. You can go to our website, wildsidetv.com, for more information. Tennessee's Wild Side, broadcast for nearly two decades, was originally created through a vision of the Jackson Foundation. The foundation remains a supportive partner in the mission to educate viewers about wildlife, natural resources, and opportunities for outdoor adventure. Wildside is produced by Rockwater TV with support from Tennessee State Parks where you can discover our state's diverse heritage through spectacular landscapes, family-friendly recreation, and affordable lodging. Tennessee State Parks, fun and adventure naturally. And with support from the Tennessee Department of Agriculture, promoting wise uses of Tennessee's agricultural and forest resources to develop economic opportunities and to ensure safe and dependable food, fuel, and fiber for all citizens.